Hi guys, welcome to part two of long-term adaptations to the cardiorespiratory system. So last time we were here, what we looked at was changes to your heart rate, decreased risk of hypertension and increased vital capacity. The next and last three things we want to look at are increased maximal oxygen uptake, VO2 max, increased efficiency of oxygen delivery and waste product removal, and then finally, increased lung efficiency in gaseous exchange. So we'll just skip forward a few slides. We've already looked at all this. So if we go to increase maximal oxygen uptake, otherwise known as VO2 max. <coughs> VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen uptake. That is all it is, okay? Now, it is usually measured in millilitres of oxygen per kilogram of body weight or body mass per minute used okay that's what vo2 max kind of stands for don't get too over kind of confused by that all we need to know is vo2 max is the maximum ability to take in and use oxygen while exercising now this increases due to long-term exercise now meaning we can breathe in or not breathe in we can use more oxygen whilst we're exercising that's only a positive. It means we can perform for longer at higher intensities. Remember, this is aerobic performance. This would really help marathon runners. So what we're saying is the air we breathe in, from that air, we actually, we're able to use more of that oxygen than someone who hasn't trained, trained much. So let's say you've got myself who has trained for, let's say, 10 years, and let's say that I'm an elite level athlete and you've got someone else next to me and they haven't trained at all and they're the age of 24 and others that haven't trained at all and um, do not play any sport we may be able to breathe in the same amount of air however my body would be better at using the oxygen more efficiently and actually using it for energy production to produce energy so I can perform for longer than the person next to me who doesn't train so your VO2 max, as I've just said, it's, it's this ability to use the oxygen whilst you're exercising. And as I've just said, this increases due to long-term training. Now, those who are classed as fit or uh, very athletic in terms of endurance runners, they have a higher VO2 max value and can exercise more intensely than those who do not. So they can perform for longer at higher intensities, which is essentially going to improve performance. The two key factors that actually influence your VO2 max are the efficiency of delivering oxygen to the working muscles and the efficiency of gaseous exchange, i.e. how those two things improve. Gaseous exchange improves and so does our ability to deliver oxygen to the working muscles. As I've said, a high VO2 max is essential for endurance sports. Now, these are some recorded VO2 max levels of um, sports and the highest they are. So for example, the, the highest VO2 max recorded is this one here of 96 okay that's a cross-country skier so you've got to think they're training at altitude their uh, their sport is endurance but it's the altitude that really gets these and this is why they've got such a great vo2 max and um, then you've got a cyclist down here in third place and um, greg lamond and then we've got marathon runners and all of these obviously are endurance athletes now there are two factors that actually affect your vo2 max and this is just some extra knowledge for you really you've got your age so the vo2 max is usually the highest at 20 and then decreases by nearly 30 percent when you get to about 65 this also varies so depending on the individual and training program the other factor is gender now because of differences in body size and composition, blood volume, and hemoglobin content. Remember, hemoglobin carries oxygen. Um, a woman's VO2 max is generally 20% lower than a man's VO2 max. So there are two factors that actually affect someone's um, VO2 max. So that's VO2 max for you. The next part we need to look at is this increased efficiency of oxygen delivery and waste product removal. So this is oxygen delivery to the working muscles and then getting rid of that carbon dioxide from the muscles and breathing it out. So we get we get better at it when it comes to long-term exercise. So <clears throat> this is due to an increase in cardiac output. Remember, cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. So the higher amount of blood we are getting to the working muscles um, per minute means we're getting more oxygen to the working muscles per minute, which means we're going to have more energy. And then it's also this idea of vasoconstriction and vasodilation, these blood vessels narrowing and widening. We become better equipped our blood vessels become better equipped and especially our capillaries okay now capillarization what capillarization means is 
we have more capillaries okay so we have new and more capillaries now remember from the past couple of lessons gaseous exchange takes place at the capillaries so if our blood vessels are vasodilating which means they're widening and we're getting loads of blood to the muscle now let's say we've got loads more capillaries this means more blood is going to the muscle we've got more capillaries we've got more gaseous exchange we've got more oxygen going to the working muscles we've got more carbon dioxide being removed therefore we're able to perform at a higher intensity for a longer period because lactic acid isn't getting built up as much because we're getting rid of that carbon dioxide which eventually will turn into lactic acid so this whole process helps because we've increased our efficiency of delivering oxygen to the muscles and removing this waste product as well. This Im improved blood movement also means it's easy for your body to remove waste products such as carbon dioxide, as I've just said. That is just telling you what capillarization is. Okay, so capillaries is where gaseous exchange takes place. Capillarization means we have more capillaries, therefore more gaseous exchange taking place, better result for the athlete. Okay, the last one, increased lung efficiency in gaseous exchange. So due to this long-term training, our lungs become more efficient, or kind of like our respiratory system in general. So activities such as endurance training can increase the amount of alveoli that we have in our lungs. Remember, alveoli is where gaseous exchange takes place. So we breathe in air, all this air goes into the alveoli. And then what happens is oxygen goes into the blood, carbon dioxide goes from the blood to the alveoli, we breathe carbon dioxide out and then this oxygenated blood now goes to the muscles. So we have more alveoli and once again we have this increase in capillarization. So we have more capillaries around this alveoli which means once again we're going to remove all of this extra carbon dioxide. We're going to get in all this extra oxygen and it's just going to be more efficient. What also happens is when we breathe in and breathe out we need muscles to do that. We need muscles to make our rib cage expand more and then kind of reduce when we're breathing out. Now what happens is the muscles that help us breathe in, they become stronger and more efficient. So we have deeper breaths, which means we get more air into the lungs, which subsequently means we're going to get more oxygen. And then when we breathe out, the muscles that help us breathe out, they're stronger, so they can actually force out more carbon dioxide per breath remember that vital capacity that increase in vital capacity so all of a sudden we get to breathe out more carbon dioxide because our muscles are stronger so that's another way that we get this kind of increased lung efficiency and then finally this gaseous exchange that we've been talking about you can watch this video here to kind of remind you of it which is available on Moodle we've got these alveoli in the lungs we've got all the capillaries wrapped around them and what happens is we're getting what like, like I said earlier we're getting more oxygen into the muscle and we're getting more carbon dioxide removed and breathed out into the atmosphere. That process of gaseous exchange just improves. It gets better as we train for a longer period of time. And this is just a quick kind of like picture to show you, kind of remind you what happens. So let's say we've got, let's say here, deoxygenated blood carrying carbon dioxide. All this blood here is now coming back from the muscle. Let's say we've got a muscle here. This is your alveoli. This is a capillary. So we've got loads more of these in the lungs, first of all. But what happens is deoxygenated blood, so blood full of carbon dioxide, comes back in here. Loads of carbon dioxide in this red blood cell. There's hardly any carbon dioxide in here, so what happens is we'll move to here, because this is where it is. All the carbon dioxide goes into there. Gas is moved from an area of high pressure, really high pressure in here, to low pressure. There's none in there, so it's a low pressure. Then what happens, we've got all this extra oxygen in here. We've got no oxygen in this red blood cell here, so what happens is high pressure to low pressure, oxygen moves from the alveoli to this red blood cell, this red blood cell is full of carbon dioxide, transfers over, then this oxygenated rich blood now goes back to the muscles, we can exercise for longer, higher intensities. So they are the long term adaptations that take place in the cardiorespiratory system. So make sure you get sufficient kind of notes taken down on that and um, continue with your work. So good luck with that. Thank you for listening. Cheers. Bye.